Hello, my name is Lisa Holzo and I am one of the creatives for Sean Petit for 2020 and 21. So welcome, welcome. I am super excited to share with you all about jelly printing. And this is the first time I've ever done it. So I did it with a group of friends and I hope you enjoy um, this new technique and maybe it's old for you it's new for me so I didn't even plan on recording but it was such a fun little project that I chose to record what I was doing and we use such a variety of paints just use acrylic paint um, I will not list every color because it was just such a plethora of colors that I just you'll see in the video so this is my own personal jelly plate that I've had for over a year in a box and I was so happy to unveil it in front of you guys. So, um, and you will need a brayer and you really don't want a thick paint. So you can see how thick I have it on there. That is too much, way too much. And you want lots of scraps of paper, um, textured paper, and of course your awesome stencils and um, you also want to bray off the excess paint on your brayers and this is rice paper that is very absorbent so each type of paper is going to react differently onto your jelly uh, prints so feel free to experiment and just really play with it because that's actually what I did since I had no clue what I was doing so I was super excited um, and then you just want to press on there and you can have two brayers I didn't use the second brayer till um, after I turned off the recording to actually bray the paper onto your print and look how lovely that is I mean a beautiful beautiful um, print and I kind of used like colors um, in the same family and you will see I will explore and really go off the color wheel because it was just so exciting and there was two other lovely ladies who was doing this with me so you will see the table shaking um, on and off because we were all in different places with our jelly print so I do start off showing you all the colors but really it's whatever you have on hand um, or brand don't be worried about the brand, just use acrylic paint. That is all you need. Um, and the brayer. And I didn't clean anything off. I kind of actually, again, experimenting. I didn't take the stencil off. I used what yellow was left on my brayer and on the jelly and stencil. And I used a little red. And I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna use the same thing I used um, on my rice paper because I didn't know what I was doing. And I do like to explore and experiment and play. So find your inner child, guys, because this is the way to do it. Fun for the whole family. And so um, I would bray over that after a while I figured that out. Um, and these came out so awesome. So happy, happy, happy. Um, with the outcome of all of this just look at that that's my second color beautiful loved it look at that and just the two colors i'm showing it off to the ladies and it's real fragile real thin so don't worry about it and make a lot of space for yourself look how pretty that is so I think I may have like didn't want to put another color on top and I took a white paper yes I'm looking for the white paper to put on top of that um, the paint that was hiding behind the stencil so and oh this is so amazing just amazing of the outcome so much fun i know you guys are all gonna go crazy going after this but look at that and i think i could probably get one more print 
So when you get a good print like that, the second print is called a ghost print because it's going to be lighter than what you had. So let me see if I did a ghost print. I was like pretty amazed and didn't know what to do with myself. It's like, oh, this is just so cool, so cool, so cool. So I think I went with um, adding a blue and just really like, what do I do next? Having fun, 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 fun. And my blue, I think, and this is all my, my friends' um, paint and supplies, but the jelly print is mine. And then I did bring, grab some paper. So this is gonna be part one of the video. And I, in part two of the video, I show you all the end results and, oh, so much fun. You know I'm gonna be doing this again, right? Because this was great. And I guess I didn't realize, like you can even get a fork and do some track marks on there or pattern marks, use your hands. You can really use anything. So I used, I think the rice paper. I'm trying to figure out what I'm using because it may still pick up the yellow circle imprint, the ghost that I didn't pick up. So I kind of wanted to see what would happen. So there, oh, you can hear my little dog, Rory, no barking. <laughs> So let's see. Yep, see the circles, kind of like the ghost print showing through. Even a little bit of red that was left over. I mean, it's just, I'm showing it off because I was ooing and aahing, like, ooh, ah, so cool. And by the, by the time I was done with this, I had a huge, huge pile. So, I mean, I was just grabbing colors after color after color, really no rhyme, no reason, just all about playing. This is, was fun. And my girlfriend was using watercolor paper. Um, she was also using scrapbook paper. Um, I did get an old book and tore out pages of a book and did um, jelly prints on. So, I mean, Really, you can use anything to print on. I think, am I getting bubble wrap? I might be getting bubble wrap. And you always want scrap paper too. Oh, so this is one of my girlfriend's stamps, which was really cool. And what you're supposed to do, which I didn't know, once you kind of pull up the ink from the jelly print, you really want to stamp the excess onto a scrap paper and then go back to your jelly print. I just kind of went with it because I was just so excited and it, it did work a little bit, but you'll see some areas worked better than others, um, but it was fun. And I did partial paper too. I mean, you just never know what's gonna happen. And I did layers upon layers upon layers. That's so fun. So, so fun. Ta-da! Look at that. So you can still see a little bit of the imprint. And I think you might see a little bit better on this one because that's where I did the first one. It's so fun. And I'm just leaving the previous colors onto the jelly pad just because it just makes it fun and I did watch a couple of videos and some people actually put hand sanitizer on there to kind of give it some transparency um, and my girlfriend did use baby wipes and hand sanitizer to clean it at the end but you can just lay your paper. So there, texture, texture, texture. So a previous layer, and now I'm adding a darker layer. And let's see what happens if I covered up all of that beautiful yellow. But we'll see. It, you can still see it. Isn't that amazing? Show me, show me. Oh, yeah, see? 
awesome. So I got so excited. I'm like, <gasps> more stencils. Let's see what we can get. More, more. So thank you, Sean, for all the lovely stencils because I think I ended up pulling out maybe four. Um, don't remember at the moment, but I will definitely label all that in the description of the video of all my supplies, but I won't do all the colors. It just got crazy. Just use what you have. It, who cares if it's on the color wheel or if it's complementary, opposite, whatever. It's, this is way too much fun to even think about that. This is the project that I want you guys to just find your inner creativity, to just let it go. Um, I needed this time. Um, I've been suffering with back pain and I actually was able to forget about my back pain for about three hours and it was so needed. Like I didn't even know we were doing this for three hours. Um, this is deli paper, like what you wrap your sandwiches in. And this is actually really good um, to use in your mixed media because it kind of, the deli paper disappears almost, um, and you can stamp on it, you can stencil on it, you can create anything on there, and then kind of um, Mod Podge it or matte medium onto your canvas. So it kind of disappears the, the wax area. So I always like to use that, it's always fun to use. Um, so I actually was able to relax and I really just loved this process. Yeah, I think it was about three and a half hours. Um, I made stacks and stacks and stacks. And these come in different shapes, sizes, circles, squares. Um, I think larger, smaller. Look at that. I mean, it's just it was a surprise at every print. It was like, oh, <laughs> you didn't know what to expect to next, which was so amazing. So I just went for it, played. Love it. I'm trying to remember what else I did. Oh, the numbers were amazing. Oh, and I'm doing like double layers. Uh, again, just playing. I don't know how it's going to look. And I, I actually put ink on top of that, so... Um, and that was kind of watery. That wasn't really ready, so it doesn't show the blue that I actually put on there because I didn't shake the bottle, so shake your paints before you put it down. Um, let's see. So I'm glad I used a white paper because I don't recall how this came out. I think I wasn't sure if my phone was on. <laughs> and let's see. Oh, it's working. Oh, look. Yeah. I'm showing it off. Can I show you? Maybe not. Oh, there we go. Cool. So taking off my layers. And if you let your bottom layer dry and then put another color on top, um, you can also get like a double imprint. So this is the negative of the number stencil with the red. There we go, yeah, that came out awesome. So don't be afraid to keep just adding color. It doesn't have to match, just enjoy it 
have fun with it, play with it. And I'm all, all about the texture. And I use the deli paper to pick up um, the last bits of the paint that's on my jelly print or pad. Cool. So these I kind of sped up quickly so you can just kind of see what I did um, so that way you don't have to sit here for an hour because it was way too much fun. But I wanted you to get the idea of the different ways to use the jelly prints or the, yeah, how to make jelly prints, I should say. Let's see. So more of the lovely circles and numbers. And use your papers over and over and over again. I think that was like the most fun. Yay! <laughs> awesome. And I think blue and yellow was the color. I really enjoyed the way those came out. It stuck with kind of that, played with the purple, but I did go back to the blue and yellow. And I'm just trying to pick up what I had underneath with the layer of color on top. Pretty. You can see the numbers, whoop, a little fast. <laughs> Um, as I'm watching myself do this, just allow yourself to explore, create, enjoy. Um, don't know if you use a word for the year or not. Um, my word for this past year, for 2020, was uh, restore. And I did go back to that word um, lots of times, and I guess even creating like this, I was restoring that within, within me that I didn't know that I needed. So we all need an outlet and that's how I began with art is to have an outlet um, to remove myself from any pain that I may have. So I kind of restored my inner creativity doing the jelly prints and, and I think, I think, my um, <clears throat> word for 2021 is grace. So I'm also allowing myself grace to be able to just rest when I need rest. As a mom, children, art teacher, um, I, we do not allow ourselves to rest and give ourselves grace. Look how pretty that print is with the bubble wrap. Loved it, and I'm showing it off to the girls. Look at that. Loved it. So this really brought a smile to me. Um, allowed my focus to only to be what you are seeing. It was, I was actually being restored um, during that time. So, and I didn't even know that. So I'm here recording the video. It was energizing. Um, I don't allow myself to be a kid again. So please find the opportunity to allow yourself to be restored, to create, to find your joy in any way that you can. And here's just a different way um, to allow yourself to maybe try something new, or maybe you're already an expert with the jelly print. Um, I'm not. So 
I got to be able to feel like a kid for the first time, like a candy, a kid in a candy store. Look how perfect that is. Um, so it was just fun, lots of fun. I couldn't stop. <laughs> So really, I, I hope you enjoyed joining me on this journey of restoring your inner creativity to allow yourself to play, to take the time to learn something new. Um, you got to see me do it firsthand and I appreciate you joining me through even the hard times look at that I, I mean it was just so much fun each print was a surprise and I guess maybe that's how life is too we don't know what we're going to wake up to we don't know what that next phone call is going to be we don't know um but I do know we can make a difference. We can allow ourselves to put a smile on our faces, to share our ups and downs with our friends, to allow ourselves to even cry. To be restored, to be refilled. So may you end 2020 with a new set of eyes and a willingness to make a difference. So enjoy the rest of these techniques. I am going to speed up some of this again and um, wait till part two so you can see the end result. Woo -woo. <laughs>
Hi, welcome to part two of my jelly printing. Um, I just wanted to show you what I use, and they come in different shapes and sizes, and um, I didn't get a chance to really explain how we did yesterday, so I wanted to really show you. Looks kind of like jello, feels like jello. Um, it's pretty thick. You can see how clean it is. Um, it was a pretty fun experience that I got to play with uh, my friend yesterday. And I wanted to show you the results of all the fun things that were created using Sean Petit's um, stencils. So um, I didn't wash them, so if you guys really like your stencils clean, you would want to wash them right away. I did not, so I wanted to show you again the ones I used, and I did one off video, so I wanted to show you those first. Um, I used this very large uh, stencil. It's the Modern Pattern one, which was amazing. So I'm gonna show you what we did off video. And I did use this, I covered it with the gold, and then I put this right on the center so you don't um, get any of the borders showing onto your print. And what I chose to do, I have um, these old life drawing canvases. It's on an actual canvas. This is a charcoal that I used and a water-soluble um, crayon. And these are actually my rejects, so I wanted to do something different for my rejects and kind of really bring them up and maybe eventually turn them into a collage. So what I did was cover this with the gold, printed on there, peeled it right off, and really, loved the result of how that looked and I'm going to show you the other ones that I've done so I'm going to go ahead and put that over there and here's another one that I did and just love that jelly print on top of an image how I'm going to use this later, I don't know yet, but I definitely now will use it more with this kind of background. I think it looks great. And I was consistent with the gold regardless of the color that I used underneath because I really played with different colors. And I have like two books of this, so I think I will go back to do this gold stencil jelly print on top. Isn't that amazing? I I loved it. Loved it, loved how this looked. And just to get an idea, um, here's another one. This was my first practice, so she wasn't completely drawn out. It was just an outline, so I was practicing to see how it would look. And this is the, the circle one. The Let's see if I can read it. It's in uh, um, the doodle circle. I'll have it all written in my uh, list on the YouTube. So just to give you an idea of two colors blended together. And so I will continue to work on that. So let me show you the fun results of yesterday. I really needed... Um, a creative outlet and this really lend to having really fun I I think my friends and I were about three to four hours of just jelly printing and it flew by so just to give you and I have a larger stack this is not even all of the stack but I took an old book and just tore pages out of it and I don't know if you can yeah see there's the gold with that larger stencil, the modern one um, design. 
and the purple is actually with a uh, yarn. I threw yarn down, wrapped it on top of the color, and then put my papers on top. And these were multiple, multiple prints, like I think I did this maybe two to three times to get the different um, double print, different images. This is the one with the string, which I loved. Um, so I did a couple of the same double print with a lighter color and then a darker color. And I'll have listed all the stencils that I used. Um, I don't know if you can see the number one in there, yeah. So another three, four passes. It could be one pass, it could be so many different passes. And this is the Japanese uh, rice paper. It was more absorbent. So again, this may have been three, four passes, lots of layers. And if, when I laid down the stencil, I also laid down the bubble wrap and then pulled that up. And I was able to get a double print in that way. So jelly printing is really, really fun. It was the first time I ever did it yesterday. So I'm glad I was able to share that experience with you guys. And these I did lay out at the same time. Um, the circle stencil and the number just in case I didn't put it in my first set of videos I just want you to see it would have been like aha, like this like this this is how that one was and then the circle was down here and then I just laid my paper just like that so I used double, and I mean, I did other imprints on there as well. Um, so as you can see, it, it's addicting. And then I didn't say also with the brayer, after you bray your paint on there, you're gonna have excess paint. You don't really want it too thick on here. Um, I use regular white paper and um, did the extra, get the excess paint off the brayer. So you'll see a lot of that background too. And then I did do the imprint just to kind of add to this. Some I did over and over, others I just really liked it plain. You can see I did this multiple, multiple times. So just really fun, endless, just Endless. I, I kind of had fun with all the colors that were available to me. And this is the string that I laid down. It had like a fuzzy fiber string. I mean, you could use anything, even a fork to make lines. Um, your fingers, scrape it. I, it's really, really endless of what you can do with jelly print. So I'm definitely um, gonna be using my print more and more. You can use ink pads on here. My girlfriend was showing me ink pads, acrylic fluids. Um, I was watching a video. They put a little hand sanitizer with the paint on there. Um, like I said, it's endless, it's fun. And you're probably wondering, what would I do with this? Um, like this could be cut out into a card and place that maybe onto the black so it shows and onto a watercolor card. Um, I plan on doing a series of drawing, like maybe sewing these papers together to create um, paper or canvas for me and then I'll paint on it. So it just depends what moves me, how I feel about it. And you can actually glue this onto a board, stiffer background if you'd like. Um, but that's kind of what I'm thinking with these, keeping my same colors, sewing them up and then painting or drawing an image on top of these. Or they can be cards, they can, 
I, I think the possibilities of what can be done with these is endless. And follow me on YouTube, One Drop to Wellness, uh, Lisa Holzel on Instagram and see what I come up with because I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with these. And But I can't wait to find out what it is and I'm going to be really happy to share that with you. So thanks for joining me. Bye.